I'm actually starting to get emotional thinking about it now, so yeah, it's actually quite hard to talk about some of it because it makes me still, after all these years, feel really upset that he's gone, actually. Darren was born in Carlisle in 1970 and grew up in the Morton area with his mum Maureen, his dad Mike, a postman, and his older sister Deborah. He went to Udale Primary School and then on to Morton Secondary School. His love of film was ignited by his dad, who would take him to the cinema. Darren had a number of lifelong all-consuming passions which started as a boy with James Bond. Favourite Bond actor, and I think it's an intriguing one, because because I'm, I'm from the more kind of, you know, generation. Yeah, I, I was, and, 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 you know, they do say that whoever you saw first is, is the one that you like. And I'd only ever saw um, Connery on TV. And then the GFT, there was a, a touring exhibition and, um, of Bond stuff, and, and the GFT up in Glasgow over a weekend put on, I think it was Dr. Now from Russia. They, they put on a selection of, of Connery ones. And, um, and there is something about that big screen where, where mm. you watch him and you think, well, he moves differently. You, you know, he was always called a panther, wasn't he, when he was on screen? Yeah. Because yeah. of the way that he stalks, and, and that was something that was a down I picked up on Dan Rothley. Mm. And um, you do kind of get it when you see him mm. on the big screen. You kind of think, fucking hell, he's just magnificent. He is Bond. As a teenager, Darren developed a passion for British cinema of the 1960s, The Smiths, and especially Morrissey, who was also hugely influenced by British culture of the 1950s and 60s. Morrissey referenced this in his lyrics, on album covers, and in interviews. Darren became a dedicated Morrissey fan and a vegetarian like his idol. And he was part of a group of devoted fans who travelled the country to see him. I just do it because I really enjoy it. I love seeing all my mates. I love seeing Maud's. <coughs> and it's fun. And there is something terribly romantic about sort of going into one town and then sort of staying there and then going through to the next and things like that. I thought I was a Smiths fan until I met Darren because he took it to the next notch, you know. Every, you know, he was always looking forward to the next Morrissey gig and he had this, this um, you know, he had it all planned out, strategy-wise, where, where to stand, where would be the perfect place to stand in front of the monitors to get the perfect view, perfect sound. You know, he had it all kind of sorted out. After school, Darren worked in retail and for a local print company. Like the male characters in the 60s films he admired, he was a bright working class lad who was looking for more out of life. He started taking A levels at Cumbria College of Art and Design and went on to study a BA degree in media production, gaining a first. I would love to say I remember, you know, but, <laughs> but I don't really remember teaching him. I remember him complaining about the other students who particularly, forgive me, some of them were uh, uh, film students who wanted to and he, he, was, he was more interested in the kind of media approach than film at the time, yeah. But then he became, when he studied film, he was very interested in film as an industry and not just, you know, a director's art form, which I think is great and very healthy way to think about film, you know. He did stand out as a student. He couldn't leave the department, the area. He, w he came in one door and went out of another and would, would peer through another door. He was one of these students that um, he wanted to get involved uh, with what was going on in the department and, and he did get involved and we started to rely on him to do various uh, tasks and jobs and basically we couldn't get rid of him. <laughs> when I first met Darren he was um, doing some teaching here whilst doing his MA in Sunderland. Um, I think everybody knows he started off as a student at, well it was Cumbria College of Art and Design back in those days. So he was a student here. So I met him in that transition from sort of being student to becoming lecturer. 
Darren started teaching film studies part-time in 1999 when the college became Cumbria Institute of the Arts and to study for a master's in critical and contextual studies at Sunderland University. Darren was sort of an impossible person to tell off, I found. He was always kind of smiling and he used to call me rich and not very many people call me rich. Uh, my parents never called me that and he's I think probably one of about three people in my life that have ever called me rich and he used to smile and he used to say I'll get it to you rich and then I'd think mm, okay <laughs> when will I actually see that um, at some point in the future uh, he, he always did get round to it but uh, he was I, I just found him um, completely adorable and very very difficult to uh, to sort of tell off I suppose I'm not sure that Darren was one of those people who, could you, who you could ever actually manage in what might be seen as the conventional way. Uh, Darren was very committed to his work. He needed support now and again. But other than that, I also hope, and I remember Darren very much as a friend. Darren was my film tutor in my A-levels, so for two years. And then he was my film lecturer for my first year of my degree. Um, I don't know why we connected him. He was just such an open kind of, like a character. And I think because we wanted to learn, he, he wanted us to learn as well. So like we would used to, we'd go sit in his office and he'd, he'd bring us DVDs in. I remember he used to bring like 80s films like Heathers. He brought me Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Um, just to lend and he just he, he wanted people to kind of be as enthused as he was and I think we, we felt that too so I think that's why we connected. What's brilliant about this film I think for me is that it, it just encapsulate everything about growing up and it occurred to me tonight when I was watching it that this came out the same year that Baggy Trousers came out and there were all these things that were speaking to me about you know going to other schools and getting and trying to give them a kick in and getting a kick in, all that girl thing, the football thing. I mean, I really do think that Rob said in his, said in his intro about um, quotable lines. Um, how I met Rob was through the 30th anniversary screening in, in Glasgow. And I had a poster, a, a grubby little poster that I'd hung on to for ages. And I met John Gordon Sinclair and, and I said, look, and it was a big dream of mine that I wanted him to, to write on it, Arriva Dachi Gordon, hurry back. And he didn't have a clue what I was talking about. And I expected him just to go, oh yeah, no bother, and, and sign it, because that's for me one of the key lines that he has in that film. But obviously life moved on for him and it must have stalled somewhere for me in the last 30 years. But it is, it's an incredibly quotable film. I don't think I would have a, a, a Scottish girlfriend called Claire had it have not been for this film, to be perfectly honest. I think this has, you know, I wouldn't live in this country, I wouldn't, Claire, you know, Claire, you know. <laughs> it's all coming out tonight, isn't it? I was a student of Darren's at Film Studies at the uh, Institute of Arts. Um, and I first met him when I was at sixth form and I got sent up to do Film Studies at the Institute of Arts. Uh, and when I first met him, his first class that he ever did, he asked everyone in the room what the five favourite films were, five favourite directors and five favourite actors and actresses. And to this day, that's still the best uh, lesson I've ever, ever had. I think there's, there's that brilliant scene in Shaun of the Dead where he, um, he kind of throws a tantrum because uh, he's just had to kill his mum. And, and it, it's so incredibly touching then because um, he, he, he's gone through this absolutely horrendous day and, and his mum and, and partner and, and he just kind of gets really upset and it's really kind of tender as well as being funny and kind of obviously very gory because of what's just happened. I think he was like a really good person for that first step to be because he was like so enthusiastic and just wanted to talk about whatever you liked and like even if what you liked was just you know not film film he was just interested in uh, talking about it and stuff, so, so I found that really easy to get on with. It didn't feel like you were excluded from the discussion about film just because you were interested in more commercial stuff rather than like art cinema and things like that. Darren became an integral part of the Institute where he was known and liked by everyone. Well, it was kind of creative people teaching creative people, yeah. And which I see this all the time at Carlisle College whenever I go in, I get really, really heartened 
because the uni, at, when they were trying to figure out who they were, they kind of lost track that we were already doing this and it, it was a nice stepping stone onto HE if you wanted to do it here. But then it became, uh, sorry, I'm, it's just, that's boring, it was fun. It was really good fun. You know? <laughs> I mean, and it, those of us who um, know the days of Cumbria Institute of the Arts and work there, it was a flat management structure. There wasn't really anybody kind of being anybody's boss. We all kind of mucked along together in a lot of ways. However, I suppose in sense of the A-levels, I was kind of Darren's boss. Um, in that we were trying to grow the programme, we were trying to get more students to um, come and study the arts um, at the Institute. We always say that we were like a little family, so not being horrible about um, academia or um, snobbery about it, but in other institutions, especially in the university where we are now, there's a m m huge divide, but at CIA there was no divide. We were like a huge team and it was a fantastic place to work. I mean, we, you always reminisce about the good old days, but actually it was pretty fantastic. Everybody went out of the way to help everyone. And it was more about culture, art, and doing things that wasn't about making money. It was about doing things for the community and for students and for art and culture. So it was a fantastic place to work, fantastic. It was definitely a lot more of an artistic like community spirit, because I, I studied there afterwards when it was just the University of Cumbria and it felt a lot more clinical and separate and uh, a divided kind of place whereas the Institute of the Arts was like an open kind of more free kind of thing and it was really good and uh, I suppose I didn't appreciate it fully at the time because I wasn't that good a student for it but it's definitely when I went back it was different and you could tell. You've probably talked to people around Nick, Pemberton, David, Emery, it seemed to be a lot more kind of what, eccentrics seem to this place seem to gather those sorts of people uh, and so that's what I kind of I remember that those are say eccentrics being collected into one room or one pub or one you know and things being said uh, sort of mavericks I guess and you know maybe those those aren't there anymore I don't know. He was a very influential man and he had a big impact on my life uh, he was very charismatic and I think like if you weren't interested in film, if there was anyone that would make you interested in film, it was Darren Connor. <laughs> it's so weird now when I look back. But So he took us to, he had an independent cinema where he worked in, in Dumfries and he took us, I, maybe like six or seven of us there to see a film. I can't remember what it was, like an independent film. And then Afterwards, we kind of, because there was a bus to catch, so we had a little wander around Dumfries and he took us out for lunch. And then when the waitress came over, we were just kind of messing around and he said he was going to have a scone with cream and jam. And then I made a joke and I was like, but dad, your cholesterol, you can't have that. And then the waitress was in hysterics and he was like, he went bright red. And then from there on, we just called him dad because it really embarrassed him. So it was just really funny. You know, I mean, Darren was a Carlisle lad who suddenly got an interest in film. So, and I think that was a great way of saying to people, you don't have to be, you know, a big sort of intellectual arty type to enjoy this. Anyone can enjoy it. Come and give it a go, you know. And I think that's what the students liked about him. I think they loved it when he stood up and said, I love James Bond or, or whatever. I love musicals. I love Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. I love Elvis, you know which was probably a shock um, because you would expect your film lecturer to be talking about probably quite different things, um, which he could talk about, don't get me wrong, he could talk about film from every angle and every aspect, but on that level, it made it really accessible. And I think that's why he deserves to be celebrated. And because he was a lovely, lovely man. The films that he taught me, I still think about them now when I watch them and stuff and I still have that running commentary that he used to do in class like he sometimes you know paused lessons and pointed out funny bits of films and funny jokes and things and I still kind of have that and it's quite nice actually it's like my favorite film when people always ask well what's your favorite film it was 
it's north by northwest and the first experience i had of that was darren showing it to me and it's it's sort of like i've got a better version of that film than what it actually is in a way because it's not just a good film it's like a good film with a funny <laughs> like commentary track and like, you learn all the little nuancey funny bits of it and uh and you know when i watch it every you know every now and then when it's on our tv and things you still kind of get that oh that's you know you get those nice moments that he taught us Darren moved in with his long-term girlfriend Claire and her sons and was settled in the Scottish border town of Lockerbie. He'd often said to me a few times that he, you know, he didn't mind whether he had kids of his own because he loved the boys so, so much, you know, and I think it was great that they had him in, his, in their lives. I'm sure he's left, left an equally lasting impression in their lives as he has in ours. Um, I wish my daughter could remember a little bit more about him. Um, she was so very young, really. Um, but In 2007, the Institute became University of Cumbria and Darren proved to be a thoughtful voice during the time as there were major changes. He was kind of the, the mortar between the bricks, the kind of person that glues things together, that brings people, you know, he was, if you, if you ever, I seem to remember this, if you ever kind of had a moment of, of criticism towards anybody else, Darren would always leap to their defence and give the opposite kind of side, not just because he was being difficult, but because he was encouraging you always to see the good in somebody else. Darren believed in the cultural potential of the city. He was instrumental in putting on two arts festivals and he briefly co-managed the city cinema, aiming to keep an independent cinema running in Carlisle, but with lack of funds, it was sold to private developers. He was, a, you know, passionate about uh, his, um, about culture, about film, and he didn't just take that to the students he worked with, he took that into the broader, wider community. He was always keen on doing community things, yeah. With Emory, we, we liked doing the Arts Festival, which we used to, we were, <laughs> but we used to give us, at one time, three grand, and we used to get about 30 grand's worth of work out of people, you know. It's unprincipled, really, because you're supposed to pay artists, but they liked us, you know, so <laughs> we would do it. But after about three years, you had to get the, uh, got the feeling, we can't do this again. And also, here's another thing that uh, if you do something good, expect someone else to take the credit for it, you know? <laughs> because yeah, I, it's just how the world is. You know. The organiser of Carlisle Arts Festival is Darren Connor, and he joins me in the studio now. Darren, good morning to you. Good morning, Mike. This must right? be a, yeah, I'm fine. This must be a pretty big screen then. It is, yeah. Um, quite exciting, to be honest. We've never done it before. It's something we've been trying to do for five years. And just coming in this morning and listening to things, people keep telling me, well, nothing goes on in Cumbria. I have to disagree this weekend. I've never seen a busier one, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, it's, it's all kicking off, isn't it? This it weekend. is fantastic. Did, did this choice of movie surprise you? Um... To be honest, no. Um, it, it's a great movie. It's one of those films as well, particularly with the way, the way the weather is at the moment, that we wanted something that people could dip into rather than sit and watch for an hour and a half. Um, so hopefully people come along, watch a bit of the songs. The one thing I'm not going to mention this morning is the weather, just to be on the safe side. They had a film festival. I don't know if you remember, but they used to do a film festival all the time and have absolutely zero money and get immensely frustrated with them all for spending all this cash that they didn't have. And now I find myself in exactly the same position. We're doing a film festival with absolutely no money and spending money that we haven't got. Um, and so, I, I, to be honest, the whole time I've been doing it, I've wished he was here, um, giving us some direction and some help. But, um, and also lots and lots of nights out. Adored him, absolutely adored him. That, that sense of a, a passion for, for, for the art form, but not just to keeping it within an institution but actually taking it to a broader broader public i think that's why we should honor him uh, with a film festival which is like the, the perfect you know the perfect thing to do really for, for for darren okay welcome back thank you for coming and bringing your tea um i think you can always tell at the rbc if we've got dignitaries in because their chocolate jaffa cakes come out which as we know isn't every week um, we're absolutely delighted to welcome the um, director of Donkeys, which you've just seen, and judging by its reaction, and one of the chaps who couldn't stay because in true Dumfries tradition he had a bus to get. Well, it all started uh, with a previous uh, 
film officer, Darren, who they got together and decided it would be quite good to have a film club where people come and watch films and then discuss them afterwards, almost like a book club with films. And it just started in a small room across at Gracefield and with a TV and a, a DVD player and then gradually it moved over to the Burns Centre and uh, it became sort of a regular Monday night slot where they watched a film, had a cup of tea and coffee and discussed it afterwards and it sort of built and more and more people came and it opened it more to the public and it became really quite busy and popular. I thought, who's this guy pacing backwards and forwards in front of the screen? Because it's as if he, he couldn't keep still. You know, he'd walk from one side of the auditorium to the other and back again while talking constantly. And I thought, I couldn't figure it out. What, what you know, what, what, what is going on? What, who is this person? And then it, it very quickly became, came through all that, that he knew what really what he was doing. He really knew what he was talking about and he knew how to interact and keep people's interest going. So yeah, that, that was, it was apparent straight from the outset that he was different, very different. It was uh, Darren's enthusiasm that uh, just made it a really good night to come along to and uh, almost no matter what the film was, he did, did pick out a few that were a bit like, you know, specialised. <laughs> that uh, He was trying to educate us every so often and it didn't always work, but most times it, it did. Generally, I think in those days, the film started at 6.30 and you'd be looking at the watch, you know, the clock about 6.25. Darren wasn't here, 6.26, he still wasn't here, 6.27. And you thought, I'm just going to have to start the film. And then he sort of walks in uh, with a big grin on his face, saying, I'm using the laptop tonight, can you set it up for me? And I'm like, <laughs> in five minutes, and I want sound and I want images. Um, <laughs> so I thought, this happened a couple of times, and I thought, I'm going to be ready for him. I had all, everything all set up, and he came and said, I'm not using it tonight. <laughs> The, the, the age group of people who come to see the films is on the higher side, you know? But occasionally you get a group of youngsters come in and he, he just, he knew how to kind of get them on board with what was happening and how to encourage their enthusiasm. And he was just really good at that with the kids. Um, I think that's important. And we wanted to show and some sort of recognition that uh, he was thought of quite highly uh, at the Burns Centre by lots of people. So we thought, what could we do? And we thought a tree would be an ideal symbol. I think they focused on a tree because he was really kind of, I didn't realise this aspect of him, but he was into kind of nature and, you know, he cooked stuff. Um, I remember talking to him, he, he wanted to keep bees. He knew I kept bees and he really was keen on keeping bees and I lent him some books. He never actually did get to keep bees. Um, so I think probably a tree is as good an idea as anything, yeah. On the 19th of June, 2011, Darren set off on a 50 mile charity cycle event to Lockerbie Loop. Later that day, instead of getting the annual Father's Day phone call from Darren, Mike got a phone call from his daughter Deborah to say that his son had died of a heart attack. It was unbelievably difficult time as Darren's mum was in the last stages of cancer and now Darren was gone too. We lost Darren on the Sunday and I went into work on the Monday morning and I hadn't been in that office on Brampton Road for very long at all when my desk phone rang um, and at the end of the phone was Claire, Darren's partner and through um, you know some difficult tears and sobs Claire told me what had happened to Darren and I tried to keep my voice together while I spoke to Claire but as soon as I put the phone down I broke down and I remember Simon Davis coming into my office just after that and he said I see you've already heard. And I'd been on a cycle ride with Darren on the on the Friday with uh, Simon and uh, we'd been a long, quite a long cycle ride from here up into the Eden Valley um, and we'd stopped at a pub, had a, you know, it was a beautiful summer's evening, we had a pint of beer, you know, it was just great, you know, and then a couple of days later he'd done the, uh, the charity race and then I think on the Monday or Sunday, I'm not sure, the, uh, the events, we got, we got an email, so devastated, you know, absolutely devastated. I came in here and uh, I just got to go and say Fiona, you know, um, 
So, I, and, and as I said, you know, it's probably affected me more than it had I mean, the close death of uh, some of my family. You know, um, just to see someone on a Friday and then be gone, and you know. Well, just unreal. I just couldn't quite believe it because he was so very, very young. You know, he'd just celebrated his 40th birthday. Um, you know, he was a little bit younger than me, shall we say. Um, so, it, you know, it was, it's no age. It was just no age. I think disbelief for a really long time, to be honest. Uh, not believing that he'd gone. Really sad. Very similar age. Only about six weeks between us. So... Mm. Sad. The funeral was different, very, very different. Um, we had the wake back at uh, the Brampton Road campus and all the staff that knew Darren all somehow got involved and students, past and present students were involved. Obviously it was really hard, but I remember when everyone queues to like say their condolences at the end and we met Claire and um, I was like, oh, we're Sophie and Jade. And she actually said, you called him dad. And so that was nice. We kind of had a little moment like that. What happened then on Brampton Road um, was not a wake in the conventional sense. It was actually the greatest celebration of anybody's life that you could imagine. We had stuff hanging on the walls that he'd been involved with. We'd, we had um, printouts of his Twitter feeds, which of course were absolutely hilarious. There were people dressed up, I remember, in Star Wars outfits and so on. James Bond characters were on the scene. It was absolutely fabulous. And what touched me especially, what I do remember, were some of the people that I met, because these were people who Dan had contact with outside of the university, outside of his work with us, and yet he had still built that rapport, relationship, and that love of film with them, people from Dumfries Art Centre and so on. You, I think you go through life and you, and you meet a few people in your life who very quickly have a kind of an effect on you. And it's this combination of the fact that they're really interesting people to be around, and they have a sense of humour, and they're really nice people and they come in and if you get the kind of proportions right in a package that person can have a, quite a deep effect on you you don't get many people like that in your life or come across them should I say Darren was one of them it was obviously it was really sad but it was so nice to see so many people there and like the uni was full like just full of people and there was like people were looking at all the like the artwork people had contributed and like there was films playing and it was just it was really sad but really beautiful. Since his funeral as well, which I absolutely I thought I know that sounds really awful, but I really enjoyed it. And you think to yourself, wow, everybody loved him. Everybody said some fabulous things and everybody was really brave. It wasn't lots of tears, I don't you know, not not from what I can remember upsetting speeches but beautiful as well um, and I remember on the at, at the Brampton Road campus thinking we've got to do something look at everyone getting together about him so for like five years I thought we've got to do something whether it's a party or let me do something and then five years later it took five years to do something it's pretty bad isn't it it's important for me because he was my friend and I think that um, these connections are much more important than not than learning, because I teaching and learning I believe in, yeah. But then a lot of things that he worked for kind of disappeared. It's a real shame because after he died there were lots of you know talk about, you know, doing something here, having a plaque, you know, so it's taken some time, but I think it's great. I wondered why I was <laughs> <laughs> doing any of this at all the other day. So I went down to uh, the cemetery, you know, stood where he's been put in the ground, you know. It's me and him, we carried his coffin down there. Not on our own, of course, but, you know. Then I thought, yeah, this is okay idea. I'm for it. Go back me. Is that okay? If, if, if there's any gaps when you get back, mm. just email me. I'll be checking my emails over, yeah, over yeah. Easter. and Because I'm going to go to and see Debbie before she yeah, gets my sure. ass. Um, but let me know how you get on. If you want me to read anything of it, just, just email it to mm, me okay, and I'll have a look cool. over Easter. Is that all right? Yeah, that's fine. Excellent. Okay, Cheers. Cheers. That was good. That never gets talked about. to know.
Don't know.